Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at fixing and repairing this vintage New Adventures of He-Man power sword. Now this sword has quite a few issues and I'm going to say right at the start, I'm not even sure I can get it fixed, but I want to give it a try because it looks like quite a fun project. If we take a quick look at the sword, you can see you've basically got the sword with a handle. It's got three buttons on it. We have this sort of clear plastic blade that should light up. If we turn it over, you can see there's a battery compartment that takes four double a batteries the cover of that is missing it's uh, broken here at the back the sword is also a bit broken you can see it's sort of uh, I don't know what's happened there but it's sort of come out a bit and this thing doesn't work it's electronic it should make lights and sounds and it doesn't work at all in fact the lights light up a little bit but nothing else much happens so there's a few areas to fix as you can see we've got to repair the sword we've got to make battery covers and we've got to try and work out the electronics and see if that can be fixed and that's the bit that sort of uh, I'm not quite sure whether I will be able to do it my knowledge of electronics is basic to say the least and I have a feeling this may be beyond my skills but I just want to give it a go if it doesn't work it doesn't work maybe I can find someone else who can help me fix it but I might as well have a try so the first thing we need to do with this is to uh, see what does work on it so let's put some batteries in and I'll show you what actually happens at the moment and that might give us an idea about what is broken inside before we even take this thing apart so I have four AA batteries here. I can see inside it's marked which way around they go. So let's pop these batteries in like that. Put those ones in like that. There's no on or off switch on this as far as I can see. There's just these buttons to press. And what happens when I put these batteries in is it actually starts flashing. You can see there's a light there flashing. We have three buttons. We've got two buttons here and one on the side. If I press this one on the side, the flashing changes. It becomes more constant. It's got a sort of on off flash without that. And if I press that, it becomes more constant. And if we press these buttons on the side, if I press that one, it stops flashing completely. And if I press that one, nothing happens. So I think something is wrong with these two buttons here, which is why this is flashing permanently. I would imagine initially when you uh, put the batteries in, this toy should do nothing. Uh, you know, no, no lights going, no sounds going. So something is wrong with these two buttons because they're the ones, if I press that one, it switches it off basically. And if I press that one, it does nothing. So I think there's something going on there. It should also make sounds. As you can hear, there are no sounds coming out of it. Uh, when you actually sort of move this weapon and sort of make a striking action, it should make a noise. And when you press these buttons, it should make a noise. So there's definitely something going on with electronics in there, but I'm not sure what. So what we're going to do, let's open it up and see if there's anything obvious. If it's obvious, then I may just be able to fix it. If it isn't, then uh, I will probably have to give up on that section because my electronics knowledge, as I say, is not the greatest. But let's open it up and see if we can spot something obvious, see if there's something going on. The toy is held together with, it looks like, uh, seven screws. So we undo all of those. Hopefully this back section will come off and we can see what's underneath it. There should be a speaker, which I'm thinking is on this side because I can see there's holes through it. This is just ornamental on this side. I'm imagining all the electronics is on the bottom of this. Uh, yeah, let's open this up and see what it looks like inside. Okay, so now we get our first look inside and we can see what's going on. It's quite a, well, I'm going to say there's not that, that much in here. Uh, there's just a sort of a chip with a few little components around it. This is the switch here and that's just pushing two metal plates together to create a connection. Then we've got some wires that go up to a speaker. I can see immediately why the speaker isn't working. The two wires that go to it, the grey and the white one, look like they have snapped off the main circuit board there so those need to be reattached that might reactivate the sound looking at the inside of this case I'm going to say this has probably been trodden on I hadn't noticed this from the outside but actually if I just sort of bend it a bit you can see there's a crack there that goes all the way along there so it looks like someone has trodden on that and snapped it and that may have damaged something over this side because some of these components look quite pushed over. I wouldn't imagine that that component there should be at that sort of jaunty angle. So it may be that something has squashed this. Uh, but yeah, OK, so there's a few wires off. That's easy to fix. We can solder those back on. Let's take this board out and see what the underside of it looks like. So it looks like we just take this switch off. 
So that just pulls out there. And there only appears to be one screw. Maybe there's also a screw missing. When you push on that, that's the button underneath. Then there's another button here and that moves the whole board. So I think there's possibly a screw missing here because that's not a very good thing to do. It's bending the board. Um, yeah, I wonder why that is missing. Anyway, let's take this board out and we'll see what the other side of that looks like. Yeah, so that's the two wires that are off there. I can see there. So these are the ones to the speaker. That white one and that grey one have broken. I have actually taken some photos of this. The first thing I did when I took the cover off was take a couple of photos so I can see where all the wires should go, just in case any more snap off. Uh, these are old wires, and yeah, judging by the fact those are broken, some more may want to snap as well. So I'm just uh, keeping an eye out for any that do. And as I say, I've marked which ones are which. So the white one is on the left there and the grey one is on the right. And then let's turn this over and see what the underside of this looks like. All right, there's the buttons. I'm going to remove those buttons, but I need to remember which way round they go as well. So the lightning bolt goes on the left-hand side. And what's that one? And that one is the circle one, and that's on the right-hand side if we look from the inside. So I'll just remember where those go as well. All right, I can see there is more damage on here, so this may be what's causing the problem. As I said, that uh, component was at a sort of jaunty angle, and it looks like it's snapped off the board there. So there's some, uh, yeah, some of the uh, circuits it's supposed to be attached to have snapped. So that will need to be reattached. Maybe that is all that's causing these issues, the fact that the speaker isn't connected and the fact that that isn't connected. It might be I can fix this. Let's hope that that's all it is. If I uh, resolder those, it may just work. Everything else looks quite good. You can see the sword here has uh, torn a bit. Maybe we can fix that, but we'll need to take this piece out to uh, get the sword out. Yeah, OK, let's take a few more bits apart and I'll do a bit of soldering and we can see if we can get this working. Okay, I've soldered what I can. I'm hoping this works because if it doesn't, then as I say, this is beyond my abilities. Basically, I've reattached the two wires to the speaker. Those were both uh, detached. And this little component here had actually broken away from the circuit board and damaged the track. So what I've done is I put some wires in to uh, replicate the tracks that have broken. So that green wire is sort of replicating the track that goes around the outside and the yellow wire likewise. And I've attached them back to where they should join onto. Um, and I'm really hoping that that is all that is needed to be done. So um, I'm going to quickly put this back together and then we'll test it because unfortunately you can't actually test this without putting everything back in its place. So I'll just do that very quickly and we'll see if I've managed to fix it. OK, so I put it back together. I've screwed everything in place and let's put these batteries in and see what happens. Oh, well, that's a step in the right direction. It's making a noise. It's still pulsing and, and coming on without me pressing buttons. I've just pressed this button to stop it. So there's definitely something wrong with these two. But if I uh, let go now. Yeah. 
okay so yeah i fixed part of it the speaker is working that was the obvious bit and uh, it is now all making noises but there's still something going on with these two buttons you can see i'm having to press this button down to stop it making a noise the light is lighting but if i don't press that button then everything is going so mm, uh, maybe i need to investigate more maybe there's something obvious that i have missed because i'm certainly part way there it does make a noise now which is yeah it's a sort of a step in the right direction as i say but yeah if uh, i let go of that button you can hear it just keeps making a noise it does change the noise if i press this side button but yeah it's not working properly let me have another look and see if i can spot something that i've missed i'm, quite, I'm actually quite pleased that i've even managed to get it working that much that's uh, uh, better than i'd expected okay well i've tried a few more things and i have to say i am now stumped this is beyond my electronics abilities the sound does work in fact it's now got louder i did a few more sort of rebits of soldering and now if i let go you can hear I've managed to make it a lot louder so there was obviously some sort of uh, dodgy solder joint so resoldering those has helped but I'm not sure why it's not working basically I have to keep my finger on this button to uh, stop it making any noises and also the sort of motion activated sounds don't work I'm imagining that's because this is sort of overwriting those um, but uh, yeah so if anyone watching wants to have a go at fixing uh, the electronics part of it then uh, drop me a line in the meantime what I'm going to do is carry on and fix the rest of this I can make a new battery cover I can repair this bit here and I've already started work on the sword so let me show you what I've done on the sword uh, and then we can start fixing up these sort of cosmetic issues and then hopefully the electronics can get sorted at a future date but I can still make this sword look nice and displayable in the meantime now the sword was actually split here so while I've got my soldering iron out what I've done is I sort of held the uh, split pieces together and carefully melted along just to sort of reshape it and then I'm now gluing that using some of this stuff called canopy glue I've shown you this before it's uh, used for sort of fixing canopies and stuff on model kits uh, it dries clear which is why I've used it and I've dropped quite a lot of that around this uh, piece that I have just melted and I'm going to let that dry overnight and that should form it's not going to be a, a hugely strong bond but it will keep it sort of in shape I wouldn't ever use this as a sword again sort of whack it on things but it means that this is now straight again and that broken piece is going to hold together quite nicely melting it with the soldering iron was the sort of the uh, easiest thing to do because I think there's plastic it's not a lot else you can do with it so I just gently uh, sort of squeezed it together and melted along and it seems to have formed a reasonable bond and that's all I'm going to do on that piece I'll leave that to dry now we can get on with making the battery cover and repairing the handle. So with the battery cover, I'm going to use some one and two millimeter sheet styrene to uh, create something. This is stuff I've shown before. So here is a sheet of one millimeter styrene. It's quite flexible. It's easy to cut and it's also very easy to uh, sort of stick together using the plastic weld that I've uh, shown previously. So that is what I'm going to use to make this. Initially, when you look at something like this, you think, oh, that's actually quite complicated. But when you break it down into sort of component parts, it's really rather simple. We need a flat surface that slides in and then we can build up some details here to make make these sort of ridges that go around to make the handle and then we have to do sort of similar to the end here that's a little bit more tapered but we can make something that fits that I'm going to do the cover first before I get on to sort of working out how to repair this uh, broken bit here because I think putting a cover in will give me a bit of structure and make me sort of realize what actually needs creating on this side and how I'm going to do it this one's going to be a little bit more complicated because I think I'm going to have to put it out of styrene and also some milliput to sort of sculpt a curve around but I think I can do it so the first thing to do is to make this cover and I've actually already started I've cut this piece of plastic so this is two millimeter styrene sheet and I've measured the width of this and the length of it and sort of worked out where it finishes at the top you can see there's some little lines at the top there which will stop the lid going in and also that at the bottom here we need a sort of little uh, tabbed section so this is my first piece that I've cut and you can see that this slides in quite nicely and already starts to look like a battery cover so onto this I'm going to start building up a surface to put these ridges on just using the uh, one and two millimeter sheet styrene so let's get modeling and I'll see what I can make
Right, so after not a huge amount of work, I managed to make something that I'm pretty happy with as the basis for this battery cover. So you can see here, I've got the top section looking really nice. So that is a two millimeter sheet of styrene with some two millimeter strips of styrene stuck on top of it. And I've actually stuck some one millimeter thick sheets between just because it looks a little too deep. So I've now got those looking very nice. And you can see this back bit, I have also sort of built up. So this is now uh, three pieces of two millimeter styrene and a one millimeter piece of styrene stuck on the top of it because what I've got to do is now shape that. So I've just sort of built this up so that I've got a big enough lump of uh, star in there and I'm going to get sanding and I will sort of shape that back down to be about the right sort of curve there. But uh, what you need to start with is just enough sort of plastic there to work with and I think I have enough for that. So I'm going to get uh, sanding and we'll get that all shaped up. But you can see that really doesn't look too bad at all. Once I've got that all sorted, then I'm going to start constructing this. And um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. As I say, some sheets of styrene and some milliput, I think I should be able to make something that looks uh, just about right. But first thing to do is let's get this all sanded down and shaped up. P O Y P O L L O I off camera I've now given that a bit of a sand and as you can see I've started to get not quite a nice sort of shape to that it actually is looking like the bottom part of uh, the sort of hilt of the handle there so I'm happy with how that is working by the time that's sort of been painted I'll give it an undercoat and I think I've got some sort of bronze paint it's going to look uh, pretty nice but before we do that we need to construct this piece that has broken off and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that at the moment I'm just going to sort of get building I think my idea is to build a sort of frame on the inside side that matches this out of a sort of one millimeter styrene sheet and I'm going to roughly build the frame that sort of goes around that angled piece there with the curve on it again out of styrene and then everything else I think I will sculpt using milliput but before I can get to that point I have to build this sort of frame and make sure it's nice and firmly held in place and I obviously can only attach it to this top section the bit that removes because obviously we want to still be able to uh, take this thing apart so I can't attach anything to this bottom section I've got to build a frame just around this top section which is going to make it that little bit more difficult but I think I'll be able to do something I'm just going to have a go it worst case is it goes wrong and I take it off and I start again but I think I should be able to make something that will sort of fit on there and then I can uh, yeah make some uh, milliput up and uh, sculpt that around and I'll need a little bit of milliput as well there's a few little sort of uh, marks in this curved bit so I'll put some milliput in that and then sand that down to make that really nice and smooth but the overall effect is that that is working very nicely and holds in place as well.
think I have something here. Basically, I've just been sort of making it up as I go along. And what is here now doesn't look amazing, but by the time I put some milliput over the top of it, I think I'll be able to sculpt something that actually matches this side very nicely. So if I take away the battery cover, you'll now see that I've constructed this sort of substructure out of little bits of uh, styrene, various sizes of styrene. And I've tried to get the sort of the, the um, basic shape right. So if we look from the back, you can see it's got about the same curve. And I've got this um, nice angled piece on the side, which does match the piece underneath. And then I can fill in the rest of this with milliput and then start filing it down and shaping it. At the moment, as I say, it's a very sort of rough shape of what I'm after. But it is going to work. I'm sure by the time I put milliput in there and filed it all down, we will get something that really looks nice. And as you can see, the battery cover still slides in quite nicely and locks in place. And all of these edges line up, which is what I was uh, sort of aiming for. So I'm going to clean up my desk now because you can see I've got lots of bits of styrene everywhere. I'll mix up some milliput and I will sculpt that in. And I'll also put a bit on here so that I can just smooth out some of the um, little dents and marks on that. Then we'll let it dry for 24 hours, file it all down, sand it all down. And I think I should have the final sort of shapes and we can then worry about painting this. And there you go, that's with some milliput in place. This is not how it's going to be finally. I've sort of just roughly sculpted this at the moment, just using my fingers and a knife. And I've got a shape that I'm pretty happy with. By the time that's set, we can then start to sanding it and shaping it a bit more and sort of fine tuning it. But the overall effect, I'm very happy with. You can see it matches quite nicely with the shape of the other corners. And uh, there's a little bit of sort of excess, which is what I'm going to sand off uh, tomorrow. But for now, we've got to leave this. So we've got to, to wait at least 24 hours really before this is set nice and firmly but I'm really quite happy with how that works and you can still take this apart so you can see that the uh, two parts do separate quite nicely and there's still space to get a screw in so um, yeah by the time this is finished and sanded and painted I'm very happy with that it's been a lot of work but I think it's worth it okay it's now a day later and everything has had time to dry first up let's take a look at the sword you can see here what i melted with the soldering iron it's got a little bit black but uh, i'm not too worried about that because that's all hidden inside the sort of handle of the sword and the canopy glue i put on has now had time to set as well and it's actually feeling really quite firm i don't want to put too much force on this because obviously this is a repair and it may break again but overall that is feeling quite strong you can certainly put a lot of uh, sort of pressure on it and it's not going anywhere so by the time that is put back inside the sword you won't see any of those fixes and it will be quite firm i obviously i'm not going to go and sort of whack this sword on things because i think it may break again but for display purposes that is perfectly acceptable so i'm very happy with that and now we get on to the handle and you can see here 
that is not looking too bad at all. So that was the finished uh, battery cover. It looks very nice. And you can see here, this is the milliput that I put on. And I've actually given it a quick sort of uh, sand and shape just to uh, finish that off. It's not a perfect match, but the overall effect is very nice. And I'm very happy with uh, how that looks. By the time we put some paint on top of it, I think it will look very good indeed. And it will be uh, hard to spot as long as I can find some paint that is this sort of coppery colour. The first thing I'm going to do is give it a quick undercoat. So let's take these pieces out into my garage. I'll mask off most of this handle because I only really want to spray that bit. I think I have some paint that will work. I've actually done a quick little test here. I've got this gold paint and you can see actually part of the gold paint has gone this sort of coppery colour. So that may work, although you can see at the bottom it is actually quite gold. If that doesn't work, I'm going to have to pop down the model shop and see if I can find something that is more of this. I'm going to say, is it a bronze? I think it's possibly a more sort of bronzy gold colour. I'm sure they'll have something that will match. But initially, let's give this a undercoat so that everything is primed and ready. And uh, then we can worry about the top coat. Okay, so that's the first attempt. And actually, it's not too bad at all. This is using some gold humble spray that I just happen to have. It's not a perfect match, but I'm almost sort of happy with it. I've actually just ordered some other paint. I've ordered some bronze humble acrylic spray, which I'm going to try next. But really, if you had just this gold, that's not too bad at all. You can see there's a slight difference in the tone, but uh, the overall effect is quite nice. But anyway, I have ordered this new paint, so uh, I'm going to wait a couple of days until that arrives. And I'll try again, see if I can get something that's slightly closer to this sort of bronzy gold finish. Well, I am back again and I'm still working on this paint problem because it's been a little bit of an annoying week. As I mentioned in the previous shot, I ordered some paint which did arrive from eBay, which was this stuff, which was uh, humble acrylic. And this is supposed to be bronze uh, number 55. But as you can see, the seller sold me, um, well, it's a, it's a used can of paint. He said this was uh, an original unopened can of paint. And as you can see, it turned up broken and it's half empty. So I've had to go to uh, eBay's sort of... Uh, refund process to get my money back on this because uh, it didn't work actually even when i did come to spray it, it's completely the wrong color anyway but i was more annoyed the fact that, that someone was selling what was supposedly a brand new can of paint and it wasn't so that's one issue so I then thought, well, I can't be bothered to do a, an online order anymore. I went down to Halfords, the uh, local sort of car repair type shop, and I bought this stuff because I thought, wow, that's amazing. That's a really close color. This is called uh, Ford Olympic Gold. And you can see that's actually not a bad color match. So I got some of that, sprayed it onto a test bit of plastic. And here you go. This is the test bit of plastic. It is absolutely nowhere near the colour listed on the cap. So, um, yeah, very disappointing indeed. And uh, even doing different undercoats and that, this is the gold it comes. So the gold on this sticker doesn't look anything like the gold that comes out of the uh, can. So that was a bit annoying. So in the end, I've gone back to the paints I already had here. The gold that I originally used on this handle was this, which is an acrylic uh, spray from Humbrol, and this is called Gold Number 16. And that gave, as you can see, a reasonably good match. And I was thinking, well, that's so close, I'll just do a trick that I've used before, which is basically you spray on another colour. When I, in this instance, I needed something that's a little bit more sort of reddy brown. And while that is still very wet, you then spray the gold on top. So I've done a quick test using this, which is a uh, Volkswagen Mars Red, uh, again from Halfords. I'd use this for fixing up an Optimus Prime. Spray that on. And while it's wet, spray that on and you get this. So this is my little test piece. So that's the two that's red with gold on it. And you can see I've managed to turn this slightly two gold piece into a much redder sort of finish. And it's still not a perfect match, but it's a whole lot closer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remask this handle, take the uh, battery cover off and do this. So spray it red and then spray it gold straight away afterwards and I will get something to match. This is a long winded process. I was hoping this would be a lot easier. I was hoping I could just buy an off the shelf can that would match this. But as is often the case, 
it doesn't work like that so I'm going to do my method here with a bit of red and a bit of gold and I will get something that's closer and then I think I'm going to sort of admit defeat and whatever color that comes out that is the color these uh, repairs will be. Okay, so that is now all sprayed and I think I'm a little bit happier with it. It's still not perfect, but it's a bit closer and it's certainly got a bit more of a bronzy look to it. So the trick is, as I say, you spray the red paint on and then you spray the gold on while it's still wet. So it all sort of flows together. You can see if I insert this battery cover now, that's not too bad. It's not perfect, but for me, I think with my sort of wabby sabby aesthetic on toys, I'm going to say that that is done. It does the job. It's got the right shape and it's almost got the right colour. And I think that is fine. So I'm now going to uh, put the rest of this toy back together. I've actually already made another quick repair. As I showed you earlier, there was a crack in the back of this plastic. This plastic looks to me like it suffers with gold plastic syndrome, which I've talked about before on the channel. Basically, they uh, put some stuff in it to make it look a bit metallic uh, and it, it tends to affect sort of gold plastic more than any others. And that makes it quite brittle. You'll see some toys that basically just shatter if you touch them this one doesn't appear to have too much of gold flecks in it but enough to make it brittle so yeah a bit of plastic weld all along the back side of that crack has uh, fixed it quite nicely so I'm now just going to screw this back together I've already put the blade back in so that I showed you earlier was held in by these two screws so you take those two screws out you can then slot the uh, sword back on you can see that's now actually really firmly held in place so my fix is working so I'll just screw the rest of this uh, toy back together and then we'll class that as done It seems a shame not to get this sword fully finished. As I said earlier, the electronic side of things is uh, something I can do a little bit of, but really on this, it's beyond my skills. And that's where the YouTube channel Retro Tech Repair comes in. I've got in touch with Roger, who runs that channel, and he is a whiz at fixing up electronics, all sorts of things. And I've seen, especially on his channel, that he fixes up old retro games. And I thought this would be an ideal thing for him to work on. So I've been in touch with him and he is really up for the challenge. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to take this power sword apart, put it into a couple of pieces so that I can fit it into a box and I'm going to post it over to Retro Tech Repair and we will see if he can get this thing working. And if you want to see if he does get this thing working, then follow the links in the description and at the end of this video where I will link to his video on how he gets on repairing He-Man's power sword. Now I do also need to say a massive thank you to Lawrence from Toy Planet UK who gave me this uh, broken power sword from the, the new adventures of he-man as you can see it's been a really fun project to work on i've got the blade working and then sort of fitting that is really nicely firmly held in place and we've have made the new sort of battery cuff and repaired the uh, little snapped off corner there and as i say it's not perfect but i'm really very happy with it it's got a sort of wabby sabby charm to it it means when you hold the sword now it feels nice and firm and it feels like you could really have a go at skeletal with it so i'm very pleased with uh, how this has turned out but now it will be passed over to Retro Tech Repair and let's see if he can get this all fixed up and working again because it would be really nice to hear the sounds and the lights going properly rather than just endlessly as I have it now. So follow the links in the description and follow the link at the end of this video to see if he manages to get it working. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.